One, two, one, two. Yeah. So do I have to show it now? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, but okay. So as our friend said, my name is Tina. I'm from Norway. Uh, and I am the CEO and co-founder of Vev. Vev is a new breed of web creation platforms for technical and non-technical creators in teams. We focus mainly on smaller and really interactive, flashy sites, scrolly telling, banners, pop-ups, so anything that you want to make shine on the web. As a business developer, where I started, um, my career has revolved around identifying and fixing problems. And I had no clear intention to focus on web design, but no matter where I was working, there was one thing, a problem, that kept repeating itself and that fundamentally limited what me and my colleagues were able to achieve. And that was creation on the web. Creating anything outside of a template on the web. I was met with like a long, boring list of why we had to go for a simpler idea than I had imagined, usually contained of time, budgets, tech. And this is also how I ended up connecting with my now co-founders of Vev. Despite one being a tech-savvy designer and the other what we call a sick developer, they too had the same experience. Fast forward to today, we're all working on a platform to try and solve this. One that can enable every creative team to enjoy full technical, but also creative freedom on the web. So today, I'll share some of the thinking that we've used around the habits, systems, and ways of working that we believe limit our creative space on the web today. Also, the approach that we're taking at Vev to try and solve it once and for all. So, I've seen that you've been reflecting. Yeah. We can make videos too. Yeah. So, you've been reflecting a lot here, but we have to go back and look at why we're all here. As creatives, we sell imagination. Creativity is pretty much our bottom line. And you're not here today to try to shortcut your imagination. You are here to indulge it. So beyond ego and finding purpose, we all know that creativity is what sells. It builds our clients' brand perceptions and quality. It wins awards and makes our agencies stand out. We asked our own users, the majority of whom are designers, why they're using them today. Pushing creative boundaries on the web and producing more creative work was rated even higher than increasing profitability. Why? Because creativity is profitability. If you champion imagination, the rest will, in theory, follow. So if someone is excited about finally being able to express their creativity, what held them back before? We believe that the answers lie in the creative process. And the creative process isn't very sexy. We uh, visualize it and present it to our clients as a, a neat linear process, a conveyor belt where a pure, perfect concept is fed through an implementation machine, from design to code to the web. But in reality, the workflow is not very linear at all. It's messy, it's chaotic, and it requires room to experiment. Something that this neat linear process provides little room for. It can only look forward, so you're forced to lock yourself into a concept early. Um, and it is wary of experimentation. 
because experimentation leads to several handoffs between designers and developers, and an endless back and forth of iterations. At VEV, we became obsessed with figuring out, like, out what held back creativity on the web today, beyond the lack of budgets and time. To truly achieve creative freedom on the web, we had to look deep into our current ways of working to dissect if it's even possible to change the way we work for the better. On our quest, we identified three core creative blockers that we believe are the main reason that we have to limit ourselves on the web today. The first is the technical minefield. Our platforms, they often dictate our creative freedom. If you have a bright idea for how to solve a client problem, first you need to figure out what tech you can use or what technology you need to take into account. And most times, you don't get to pick the tech stack for your client. They might be using legacy CMS systems or headless CMS systems that you have to adapt to. And for these systems, front-end development is the method to achieve a custom end result. Which takes us to no-code tools. Are these the true solution to our future tech stack needs? Well, no code is suitable for many use cases. Current platforms are mainly built for designers. They lock teams in and limit how custom you can build. And this makes no code, it's hard to use them for edge cases. So we're often forced to, to lean on headless CMS systems to build customer sites. This takes us to our second creative blocker, the tension between design and code. And this tension is crystallized in the much dreaded handoff, the part where a designer hands their creations over for developers. You thought it was funny? Yeah. Hands it over to the developer. And it's a story that designers know well. The horror of birthing something beautiful and pushing it into the abyss. The waiting and agonizing and the sinking feeling when you see your design coded for the first time. But developers aren't the problem. They're not destroyers of dreams. They too get that sinking feeling when they're handed a design that's impossible to implement. Their role becomes one of creative pragmatism, navigating frameworks and boundaries to try and translate a designer's fever dream. We think that this tension is a direct consequence of the linear creative process that mentally, but also physically, separates design and code. And it's still alive and kicking. We can see it in the rise of a no-code tech industry. And don't get me wrong, I love the accessibility that no-code tools are bringing to the web, but no-code tools alone can only take the web so far. They sell themselves on their ability to cut out developers, so they democratize the web for non-technical people by stigmatizing the technical ones. They treat developers as obstacles instead of creative equals, and they maintain the creative or the designer developer creative silo, if we want to call it that. And this takes us full circle to our third creative blocker, the conveyor belt approach. By treating creativity across skill sets as a production line, only a few lucky ones will actually get to see their ideas come to life. So our platforms and workflows, they are designed to only look forward. So they're not designed to allow us to explore our ideas in tandem. And usually budget, time, and business goals forces us to limit ourselves. And it makes it all too easy to reach for a solution that you used before and just adapt it. So we're forced to imitate instead of innovate, innovate, nice word. And we're too often forced to settle on templates. So now we looked into the problem and over to my favorite part. How do we fix this? And I'm actually not allowed to show you a demo, but um, I can share the thinking that we're using at VEV to build technology and workflows to try and tackle these challenges the principles that guide how we run our company, how we work together, and also how we help our clients bring their wildest ideas to life. The first is working towards true technical freedom. 
We shouldn't have to water down our concepts to fit a tool. We should be able to create an idea just like we imagined. To get there, we need to build technology that enables a free web. Freedom from your client's tech stack, freedom to actually continue using the tools you love, freedom to create an idea just like you imagined it, publish it anywhere, embed anything, and also the freedom to actually leave the tools that no longer work for you. We're clearing a path by building open technology that allows you to create an idea just like you imagined it and launch it anywhere, even on your client's legacy CMS, without any lock-ins and without any lifelong commitments. Secondly, to break silos and tension, we need to champion creative equality. It's about bringing non-technical and technical creators together instead of working in bubbles and cutting people out of the creative process. It's about making it easier for designers and developers to actually combine their crafts to push what's possible on the web today. And what does that mean in practice? So at VEV, we're building a platform that combines the best of no code and code. So we want to remove the low value, repetitive development work like changing button colors and kerning that distracts developers from the sexy stuff, a lot of the stuff that we've seen here on, in this conference, but also that removes designers from the implementation of their own ideas. By merging design and code into one agile flow, we are able to retire the relay between our specialisms and work more synchronously as one unit. Finally, at VEV, we're championing a creative process built on constant play of breaking things, experimenting, going backward to go forwards. We want to protect space for it. To get there, we built a platform that makes it possible to work in circles instead of lines. We want to make it possible to actually pause and iterate and explore different ideas throughout the creative process. So you can not only create an idea just like you imagined it and launch it anywhere, but we also support the creative process along the way. So you can explore different creative directions. Uh, you can even sketch out solutions fast so that you can share true-to-life concepts with clients. And you can also iterate on con like coded concepts halfway through a project without spelling disaster for budgets or timelines. To sell our imagination, we want to build a workflow that helps us become better creative communicators. Finally, we hope that open technology will remind us why we got into our specialism in the first place and enable us to take time to actually enjoy our imagination. Thank you. <laughs>